This lecture is going to cover the muscles of the pectoral girdle and the rotator cuff. Muscles of the thorax that move the pectoral girdle. Muscles that move the pectoral girdle must do so by stabilizing the scapula so that it can function as a stable origin for the muscles that move the humerus. Scapular movements increase the range of motion of the humerus. Many humeral movements would not be possible without scapular movements accompanying those of the humerus. For instance, raising your arm above your head. Now, seven of the nine muscles that cross the shoulder joint originate on the scapula, except for the pectoralis major and latissimus dorsi. It's for this reason that the pectoralis major and latissimus dorsi are considered axial muscles. Four deep muscles strengthen and stabilize the shallow shoulder joint and act to join the scapula to the humerus. They form the rotator cuff, a nearly complete circle of tendons around the shoulder joint like the cuff of a shirt sleeve. And here's the rotator cuff muscles. These I refer to as your sits muscles because this is how you can remember them. Sits, S-I-T-S. -S. The first S is the supraspinatus, as you can see right here. Supraspinatus sits within the supraspinous fossa. The next one, the I, is infraspinatus. It sits within the infraspinous fossa. The next T is teres minor, and that's right here. Now there is a teres major, but teres major is not part of the rotator cuff. So don't forget that. Only teres minor is part of the rotator cuff. And then next, if we look at the anterior view of the scapula, we have the second S, and that's for subscapularis, and this sits within the subscapular fossa. And here we see the trapezius muscle. And again, this is one of the axial muscles, but it does elevate, retract, depress, and upward rotate the scapula. As you can see, it is attached to the scapular spine. Also attached to the scapular spine is the deltoid muscle. And that flexes, extends, and abducts the arm. Now, if we go deeper, we're going to see the levator scapula muscle. And that, of course, as the name implies, it's going to elevate the scapula. And then we have the rhomboids, rhomboid major, and rhomboid minor. Remember, major supports minor, so major is below minor. And that is going to be for scapular retraction. Here we can see pectoralis minor muscle. That protracts and depresses the scapula. And the subclavius here helps to stabilize the, the clavicle. So it helps stabilize part of the pectoral girdle. And then we have the serratus anterior muscles. Serrated means sawtoothed. And um, when other muscles are in place, this gives kind of a sawtooth appearance. Um, but what it does is it protracts and upwardly rotates the scapula. Now, the innervation of the serratus anterior is C5, C6, and C7. And what we say is C5, 6, and 7 wing your way to heaven. If something is wrong with that nerve, that is going to cause weakening of the serratus anterior, and you'll see the scapula kind of winging away from the person's back. So, in other words, their scapula sticks out. Okay, so one of the things that the serratus anterior does is it holds the, the scapula up against the chest wall. And if we look anteriorly now and we cut away some of the ribs, we can see the subscapularis. And again, that medially rotates the arm. That's one of the four rotator cuff muscles. Here are the other rotator cuff muscles. Uh, we have the supraspinatus. That's going to abduct the arm. The uh, infraspinatus. 
laterally rotates the arm. Terry's minor is going to laterally rotate the arm. Now, again, Terry's major is not part of the rotator cuff, but what it does is it adducts and medially rotates the arm. So not really a shoulder muscle per se. It, it does influence the humerus though. Um, so again, just reviewing the uh, rotator cuff muscles, supraspinatus abducts the arm, infraspinatus laterally rotates the arm, and teres minor um, also laterally rotates the arm. And subscapularis medially rotates the arm.